Yeah. The, the Breakfast Club, bitches. Who's donkey of the day today? Well, donkey of the day for Tuesday, July 9th, goes to a Caucasian male named Michael Paul Adams of Arizona. Now, let the record show the mayonnaise is heavy with this one, ladies and gentlemen. Too much goddamn mayonnaise. And a story like this is exactly why I get pissed off at guys when people call and tell me I'm creating a racial divide in America because all I'm doing is calling out the blatant racism and bigotry that exists in this country. First things first, uh, rest in peace, Elijah Al Amin. A 17-year-old young man of color. This young man is dead because of the fear that some white people in this country have of black people, uh, the fear that they have of people of color. All right, don't call this radio station complaining about me if you're not willing to call and complain and raise holy hell about stories like this. Would you like to know why Elijah R. Amin is dead? Let's go to KPHO CBS 5 for the report, please. Friends say 17-year-old Elijah Al Amin had big plans to own his own business one day. But on 4th of July, police say Elijah was at the soda machine inside this Circle K when 27-year-old Michael Adams came up behind him and slit his throat. According to Adams' attorney, he was just released from the Department of Corrections two days ago after serving a 13-month sentence. The police report says Adams told police the 17-year-old was listening to rap music in his car, and he believes people who listen to rap are a threat to him and the community. So he said he stabbed him with a pocket knife. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Elijah Alamine violently stabbed to death because he was listening to his rap music too loud. His rap music made this white devil feel unsafe. If you're mad about me calling this man a white devil, you're probably a white devil too. Now, clearly... There's some type of mental illness happening in Michael Paul Adams. It's clear. I say it a million times a day. Hurt people hurt people. People are dealing with all kinds of trauma and hurt they need healing from, and they go around redistributing that pain. But this guy, Michael Paul Adams, is dealing with something in his brain that's even more sinister. I don't know what the diagnosis would be because I'm not a psychiatrist, but I do know that some studies have said violence is not a symptom of psychotic illnesses such as schizophrenia, but there's a slightly increased possibility that someone with a psychotic mental illness may be violent if they have a previous history of violence, uh, mission. Use, misuse alcohol or drugs or they are not receiving effective treatment and according to Michael Paul Adams lawyer he was not receiving effective treatment let's hear it this is a disabled person and he's been released into the world and left to fend for himself and two days later this is where we are his attorney says the Department of Corrections failed Elijah and that Adams was put back on the streets with no resources or psychiatric help even though he had a past of severe mental illness and violent crimes. She wants policy to change so no other teen has their life senselessly cut short. Now, the Department of Corrections tells us once they released Adams from the center in Yuma and transported him here to Maricopa County, they did provide contact services for him, but they no longer had legal authority over him. They also tell us he was not designated as seriously mentally ill. Now, look, I know y'all out there screaming nonsense. They're just trying to use the he's crazy excuse to get him off. But symptoms of psychotic illnesses may include frightening hallucinations and delusions as well as paranoia. This means there's a small chance someone who is experiencing these symptoms may become violent when they are frightened and misinterpret what is happening around them. Michael Paul Adams was clearly misinterpreting what was happening around him. Just like the YouTube exec, uh, the white man named Christopher Kuker, who called the police on a black man waiting for his friend in the California apartment building lobby was misinterpreting what was happening around him. Just like uh, Jennifer Schultz, a.k.a. Barbecue Becky, was misinterpreting what was going on around her when she called the police on a bunch of black people having a cookout in the park. Just like George Zimmerman was misinterpreting what was going on around him when he called 911 and eventually fatally shot Trayvon Martin because Trayvon was minding his business, going to get some Skittles and an iced tea. Whenever a black man or black person is involved, it always seems like it's a white person misinterpreting what's going on around him. And a lot of times, like in the case of Michael Paul Adams, it leads to some type of violence. And the white person who initially said they were threatened ends, ends up being the actual threat. Okay, Elijah Alamin was minding his business. If you think the kid is playing his music too loud, tell him to turn it down. If you're that threatened, call the police. Which, by the way, all right, police are the kings of misinterpreting a situation, especially when black people are involved. All right, think about that. A black man minding his business can be killed by a random white man for having his music too loud. And then when the police are called, lives are still in danger because the police can misinterpret the situation just like the random white man did. And you wonder why we experience what I like to call being black annoyed. All right, which is the act of being black and paranoid in America. All right, don't ask black people why we deal with so much anxiety. If you look at what we have to deal with, you will understand. Now, do I think Michael Paul Adams suffers from some type of mental illness? Yes. 
Do I think Michael Paul Adams is a racist bigot too? Yes. Do I think? Jesus Christ. (laughs) Do I think racism and bigotry is a mental illness? Well, it would seem that way because why are you so afraid of someone because of the color of their skin? All right. Why do you hate someone because of the color of their skin? Why do you feel threatened because of the music someone is listening to? It's because you know that music is synonymous with black people. So to answer my question, do I think racism and bigotry is a mental illness? No, I think it's a choice. I think it's a learned behavior that has been passed on from generation to generation. All right. That hate, that false sense of danger. All right. White people have around black people. I think that's all a choice. And uh, I don't know if you realize it, but every time we hear of someone being threatened by a black person, you know, a black person's presence, it ends with something violent happening to the black person. So tell me again, why are you afraid of us? Please let Kathy Griffin handle my white work and give Michael Paul Adams the credit he deserves for being stupid. Please give this giant jar of mail the biggest hee-haw. So crazy. Yep, and it'll be some white people calling up to the radio station today complaining about the use of Cracker Ass Cracker and White Devil, but not complaining about Michael Paul Adams actually killing this young man for no damn reason at all. Charlemagne the God here, and today's Donkey of the Day is brought to you by the law office of Michael S. Lamonsoft. Don't be a donkey and call my friend Michael if you've been hurt in a construction accident. 212-962-1020. That's 212-962-1020. Don't be a donkey!